Welcome to this StatsCast. In this StatsCast we look at some graphical displays used for summarising data. The graphs we look at come from a paper published about the air tightness of buildings in the UK. The response variable of interest in this study is the air permeability, how much air permeates into, that, into dwellings. Now air permeability is a quantitative variable and so the author constructs this histogram of air permeability to begin with. Now it's not particularly well constructed look at these labels it's very difficult to know what, what box they're referring to and how they how they connect at, at a quick glance. Nonetheless we can still learn some things about the air permeability of the of the data of the dwellings. First of all we can see that the average or the typical value is probably somewhere around here at around about seven units. The actual units being used is down here but I'm not even going to try to say that. Now we'd also expect that not every dwelling would have the same amount of air permeability and that's what we see. Some of them for example are right down near zero and they go up to well around about 14 plus we have this outlier here. It's a value that's much larger than all the rest. It's around about 18 units. You can also see there's some kind of general shape that we can see. It's roughly symmetric apart from the outlier. It's got these two peaks, so it's roughly bimodal. It's a bit of a funny shape. Now, as is typical in research, the main research question concerns relationships between variables. In this case, the authors want to study the air permeability across different building types, which is a qualitative variable, and different dwelling types, which is also a qualitative variable. And so to do this, what the author does is construct a box plot is a useful plot for when we want to compare a quantitative variable across some nominal categories. And so this is the, the box plot that they use. We can see that they're comparing the air permeability for houses and flats and also for different building methods. One thing we can see straight away is that some of the building methods are only used in flats and not in houses and we should keep that in mind when we're um, trying to make our comparisons. So for those types of building methods where there are both houses and flats being constructed in that way, what do we learn? Well, we can see that the, the median air permeability in general is a little bit lower for flats than it is for houses. And low permeability is a good thing. That means there's less air um, that can get in and out of the buildings, less dust that can permeate. You can see that the amount of variation is somewhat similar for tra traditional masonry the variation between dwellings is much higher for flats when we're using a timber frame building method. The other thing that's quite striking about this box plot is the number of outliers that are identified. This one up here for example corresponds to around about the 18 units that we saw earlier in the histogram. Now the um, box plot's reasonably well done. We have our, we have our labels, we have our, our units of measurements that are included. But one thing that's really quite distracting is these these labels attached to the outliers. These labels refer to the row in the SPSS data file that that observation corresponds to. Now, of course, that is completely meaningless to us and to any reader because we don't have that information. We don't have the SPSS data file. So all of those things really should be deleted to make this a much better graph. One of the other things that this author does in this paper is to compare the target permeability of the building design with the actual measured permeability in practice. Now the target permeability and the actual measured permeability are both quantitative variables. So with two quantitative variables a useful graph would be a scatter plot, much like this. Again it's a reasonably well done graph. We have our labels and units down the bottom and on the other axis as well. We have our numbers here so we know what everything refers to. But one thing that we need to remember is that the purpose of a graph is to display the information in the clearest, simplest possible way. And the purpose of this graph is to show how the actual measured permeability compared to the targets. Let me show you what I mean. There's four buildings that have a target permeability of five. And we can see, for example, that if we draw in a bit of a line here at the target, that some buildings have a permeability too low, which is good, and some people have... Um, perme some buildings have permeability that's too high. But if we go over here to about a target of 10, we can see that if we draw our target here at about 10, most of the buildings that we looked at had permeability less than 10, which is a good thing. There was only very few whose permeability was larger than 10. 
that sort of information is very useful in understanding um, the important message of this graph.